This is episode 62 of Ethics and Culture Cast from Notre Dame's De Nicola Center for Ethics and Culture. Welcome to episode 62 of Ethics and Culture Cast from Notre Dame's De Nicola Center for Ethics and Culture. I'm Ken Hellenius, the communications specialist at the center. In this episode, we chat with Alex Jones, the co founder and CEO of Hallo, a Catholic app that helps users discover the church's rich tradition of prayer, meditation, scripture study, and more. We chat about his journey from practical atheist back to the faith, and how his own journey has been nourished by sharing the church's rich spiritual traditions through technology and business analytics. Let's sit down for this inspiring conversation. Well, Alex Jones, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Where are you from? What did you study? What did you do immediately after graduating from Notre Dame? Kind of those sorts of things. Yeah, I grew up in Columbus, Ohio. I went to a small public school uh, called Grandview Heights, right outside of the city, and then went to the University of Notre Dame in in South Bend, was uh, engineering, mechanical engineering um, there. Graduated in 2015, went to work as a consultant in Chicago, a strategy consultant at a firm called McKinsey and Company. Was a what they call an analyst, and then a engagement manager there. Probably there for three and a half years or so, and then started working on Halo. In parallel, ended up going to grad school, and then have been working on Halo full time for uh, the last few years. Wow! So. You worked as a consultant, but you left that behind to create and launch an app that helps people pray. So I'm going to ask you a question that I'm certain you've heard countless times, maybe even from your parents. What were you thinking? <laughs> I have definitely heard that a few times from my uh, from my mother and father there. Um, I loved consulting. I thought it was an amazing job. I really liked working on new problems. You get an exposure to really high level strategy discussions, technology stuff. I did a lot of digital design work at, you know, a very early in my career where I shouldn't have been given the amount of responsibility I was. And everybody was just enormously bright, pushed me to especially learn how to form and lead teams and solve really complex problems that seemed uh, too big to tackle. I was always a little bit interested in entrepreneurship, but I wasn't one of these people that was, you know, set from a young age to be an entrepreneur or, st- or lead a startup. But really, I mean, so it's the all the credit is to to the big man upstairs. But uh, so if it wasn't for if it wasn't for God, definitely would not be doing this thing. But I mean, so the story there, I I was raised Catholic, but fell away from my faith in high school and college. Would have considered myself atheist or agnostic for most of that time. And I got really into meditation, secular meditation, right after undergrad. And it was the really early days of Headspace and Calm. And I thought they were really amazing tools, ways to learn this technique within the comfort of your own home, just sitting still for 10 minutes, feeling like you had kind of a personal guide. It was a lot cheaper than going to a meditation studio or flying you know, around the country. And But every time I would sit and meditate, my mind would feel pulled towards something spiritual, something Christian, the cross, the the image of the Holy Spirit, something which I just thought was very strange. So I started talking to priests, brothers and sisters, a bunch of folks from Notre Dame, asking, hey, is there any intersection here between this faith thing and this meditation thing? They said, "Uh, yeah, we've been doing it for 2000 years. You probably should have heard about it. It's called prayer. And of course, I'd (laughs) known, you know, about prayer, but I and I tried, you know, hey, saying the things that I'd memorized as a kid or Hey, thanks for stuff. Sorry for stuff. Help me with stuff. But all that always kind of felt like I was just going through the motions or just journaling in my own head. It never really felt like there was any real sense of peace or um, depth or two-way conversation there. And I've since learned that all those prayers that I thought were 
you know, just going through the motions are infinitely more beautiful than I uh, could have imagined. I just didn't appreciate them. But I started learning all about this really beautiful contemplative and meditative tradition within the church that I had never heard of. So things like Lexio Divina, Ignatian spirituality, Carmelite spirituality, recollection, um, the exam, and a bunch of stuff. And I sat down one day, Googled how to do Lexio Divina, which is a way of meditating on scripture, and randomly opened up scripture meditated on the passage where Christ teaches us the Lord's Prayer, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, and hallow. You pick a word that sticks out to you, and hallow is the word that stuck out, and it just, uh, it just brought me to tears, changed my life, brought me back to my faith, changed everything about what I value, um, and obviously what I do. But it was just this beautiful combination of this deep sense of peace with um, this depth of purpose and meaning. So hallow means to make holy. Is God making me holy? Am I letting him make me holy? Am I supposed to be helping other people grow in virtue? Am I supposed to be serving other people? These really big questions, stressful questions, but wrestling with them in this place of deep peace. And it changed my life. And it was, you know, I had to work on that. It was just such a, uh, it, you know, my argument was, hey, if I spend all my money and all my time and it helps me a little bit get into heaven, that seems like a positive enough ROI. And uh, the... You know, if, if maybe it were able to help one or two other people, I mean, that would be a, a dream come true. I mean, it'd be of infinite worth. And so, I mean, that's, you know, Mc, McKinsey and Consulting, I thought was a great job. It was a phenomenal career and big fans of the firm and everybody there and uh, would highly, do highly recommend it as a career for a lot of folks getting started. But Hallow has the advantage of Jesus and <laughs> having God call me to it. And it's tough to compete with that one. So, I mean, and this is, Hallow is the hardest by far job I've ever had, but it, I could not imagine a cooler or more enjoyable job just for me personally, getting to work on building something, technology, just from the secular point of view, and then getting to journey together in my own spiritual journey with you know tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of folks in the app and getting to discover this rich, beautiful content and grow deeper in our relationship with God together. It's just been the blessing of a lifetime to be able to work on. So it's uh, impossible to compete with that one. Um, <laughs> and we'll see where we'll see where God takes it. You described the oddest version of Pascal's wager that I think I've ever heard. You know, the idea that if, if you invest all and you get a little something back, great, but it could be an infinite return. That's amazing. <sighs> Well, it already has been an infinite return. Uh, I, I'll tell a story. The first, we started the app and launched it to a small group of beta testers, friends and family folks, uh, just to see if anybody would find it useful. And it was going into the end of the year 2018. And my cousin was 40 years old. My older cousin had just passed away uh, randomly in his sleep. And his mother, it was it was her only son, my aunt, and she, you know, wouldn't get out of bed, couldn't eat, could could barely do anything for months on end. And she was one of the beta testers on the app, and she ended up trying it, especially at the beginning of the Advent season, and sending us a note that just said, um, I just wanted to let you know that every, this time of year, every year is always a stressful and anxious time for me. I have to figure out all these gifts I got to get people, figure out when I'm going to see my kids and my grandkids and figuring out travel and all that stuff. And especially this year, I'm facing it with a near infinite amount of dread as it's the first Christmas that I'll face without my only son. Uh, and I just wanted to let you know that meditating with the Hallow app each morning has been the source for me of the only source of peace that I've been able to find and has reminded me of the real meaning of this season and to keep my eyes on Christ. And it's, I mean, that note alone, I would have worked my whole life for the, wow. and every would have lived in a cardboard box outside if at the end of the day that, that, uh, I got to receive that note and, and praise God for it. But, um, yeah, so it's, and, and we get honestly notes like that over the last two and a half years since launching, we've gotten, you know, hundreds, thousands of notes, uh, from folks where God has just done absolutely miraculous things in their lives and brought them just a really deep sense of peace and a beautiful relationship. And, uh, so it's, it's just a, it's a blessing of a lifetime to get to work on, but yeah, as far as I'm concerned, the ROI is already, already infinite. So, wow. Well, tell us a little bit about the Hello app itself. What are its main features and how is it different today than, than that first beta version that you launched? <laughs> the second one is a great question. The first version of the app was terrible, but the, the, <laughs> the short version of what the app is. It's a guided prayer and meditation app rooted in the Catholic tradition, but uh, we've got a lot of folks from a bunch of different Christian traditions who find it useful and a bunch of different faiths, a bunch of Jewish folks. We've got some Muslim folks who are uh, using it. 
uh, you, and, and you can think kind of like Headspace and Calm if you're familiar with the big kind of secular mindfulness meditation apps, but for prayer and rooted in the, the teaching of the church. And so what it has is a bunch of different ways, audio guided sessions. You open up the app, you pick from whatever way you want to pray or meditate. Uh, you pick a length. It can be five, ten, it can be a minute, 30 seconds, five, 10, 15 minutes, an hour. Uh, you press play, close your eyes, and it, you have a guide there who leads you through the meditation. Everything from a daily rosary, which is super popular, a daily gospel meditation, the mass readings, uh, Divine Mercy Chaplet, Novenas, uh, Introduction to Contemplative Prayer Challenges. We've got, and that's kind of the core meditation and prayer concept, but then we've also got this big sleep uh, section on the app for at night if you have difficulty sleeping or stress at the end of the day to close your day uh, with God. We've got a bunch of amazing scripture stories read by people in this beautiful tone. Jonathan Rumi from The Chosen, the actor who plays Jesus in The Chosen, Father Mike Schmitz, Bishop Barron, a, a bunch of folks who uh, contribute to the app and a bunch of these really great kind of nighttime Bible stories. And then uh, we've got a beautiful kind of music collection a bunch of really awesome Gregorian chant, uh, ambient music, a bunch of original stuff to hallow, and then a lot of scripture. So ways to dive deeper into the Bible. We've got Father Mike's Bible in a Year Challenge, which is just amazing. Folks are loving it. Um, and Jonathan Rumi does this really well done uh, uh, Gospels reading, and he's doing uh, a lot more of the Bible now, so stay tuned. But uh, Gospels reading, where he you know, adds all this energy to it, and it really kind of uh, revolutionizes the Bible for e even folks who are super familiar with it. Um, and so there's a bunch of content on the app. We're really just getting started. Uh, but the goal is just to help folks to find a sense of peace in their relationship with God um, and to grow deeper in that relationship. Relative to where it was two and a half or even a year ago. So I coded the first version of the app and it was terrible. Very, <laughs> very poorly. Our, uh, the first, uh, our first developer came on and said, Alex, in all, in all, uh, humility, would you mind if I took a week and deleted all of your code? And so he did. I still got like two lines of code in there that say written by Alex Jones, but everything else has been deleted. Um, I mean, honestly, it just played and paused. There's a little journal functionality that we've kept where you can reflect on each session after and ways to like track your habits and build habits. And so it started as a really simple app. And, and really, the first thing was just nine sessions, kind of this intro to contemplative prayer with Lexia Divina, Ignatian, Carmelite recollection slash Christian meditation type stuff. Then it grew, you know, we launched with maybe a hundred sessions or so on the app, really focused on kind of the core daily prayer, daily meditation. As we've grown, we've kind of expanded into these new categories and added a ton of new content and partnered with a lot of really phenomenal creators. So I think we, we now have over 3000 meditations on the app uh, across kind of the sleep and, and the, the gospel readings and the um, music and, and all that stuff. And we've partnered with a lot of phenomenal folks, Dr. Scott Hahn, Leah Darrow, a lot of amazing uh, creators and inspirational faith leaders to add content to the app. So um, has been a blessing to get to work on. I can, I often will post kind of uh, throwback pictures to the beginning. It also looked hideous at the beginning. Well, <laughs> at least in my perspective now, looking backwards, uh, it was essentially all purple. Uh, and our designer UI UX came in and said, hey, Alex, do you mind if I delete all the app that you made? So everything is different than how it was originally, but they done a the team is is absolutely phenomenal uh and is some of the is creating some of the most amazing content and app functionality and user experience and design that uh i think exists in the world in all in all humility but um but yeah so has has grown a lot but still still a lot more to do awesome well tell us a little bit about that content as you mentioned there's tons of content and as i scroll through i recognize many names you you've talked about father mike schmitz uh, dr scott hahn uh, amanda vernon and matt face father matt face is my associate pastor at saint joseph parish here in south bend so one of my favorite things by the way as i scroll through is those wonderful the design of the cartoonish drawings, but you can identify who the real world person is. Like I knew it was Scott Hahn when, when I scroll through and you see this kind of shape with a, a beard kind of thing. It, it's really fun, but uh, tell us about this content. How do you choose what to include? Are you repackaging existing material? Are you commissioning all new material, some combination kind of talk about the content? Yeah, the, Two things that matter to us when creating content. One is that it's, uh, we like to say Catholic, both uppercase C and lowercase C. So it's in line with church teaching, uppercase C and lowercase C. It's as, as 
uh, accessible to as many folks as possible. Uh, so we're trying to bring in as, as many folks to discover kind of the richness and beauty of the church's tradition and spirituality as we can. So trying to be as, as welcoming as possible to as broad a group, but always 100% and authentically aligned with, with church teaching and theology and everything we do. So that's the first thing is, is making sure that it's Catholic. And the second thing is uh, – just making sure that I use a silly word dope, but uh, uh, making sure that it's awesome, just really high quality yeah. content, really beautiful and, and life changing content. And the first one is a, you know, it's not easy. There's a bunch of stuff that we have to do to make sure that, you know, you're spacing sessions right and that they're focused on Christ and in line with church teaching. We reference the catechism all the time and, and are trying to lead folks as much as we can. Uh, and we've seen countless number of journeys of these folks coming back to the church, but back into the sacraments and the beauty and power of the sacraments. But we also have a tremendous team of theologians uh, who are creating this content and a great um, a great advisory board led by Bishop Kevin Rhodes and Father Mike Schmitz and a bunch of really phenomenal folks, that, uh, uh, Professor Cavadini from, from Notre Dame, a bunch of amazing folks who are making sure and help us when we you know come up to questions. Honestly, it's not – you know, we're not inventing anything new. So it's, it's not, uh, most of the stuff for, you know, Alexia Domina has been around for over a thousand years, most of the time. And a lot of it is just, you know, meditating on the daily gospel or, or on scripture. This, so that's the first piece is making sure that it's, it stays in line with church teaching and is Catholic and accessible to as many folks as possible. The second one is just making sure that we try to create something as, as great as possible. I like to say that's a combination of science. Uh, so data and asking folks on the app, what they would like and what content they would, uh, choose, and seeing what, you know, when folks start a session, whether they're able to build a habit of prayer, really just trying to help folks build a habit of, of growing deeper in their relationship with God through prayer. And so what is the content that helps folks do that best? Um, so data is super important, but then on the other side, uh, Art and gut is, you know, just kind of as the great part for us is, you know, I'm journeying through this for the first time, well, at least over the last, you know, few years was really coming back to my faith and discovering it along with our, our community. And so it's a really easy thing when it's, you know, hey, something changes my own life to be like, ah, we got to share that with folks. And right. so it's the it's an amazing job, actually, because I just get to, you know, uh, selfishly try to uh, explore as, as much really beautiful, uh, life changing spiritual content as possible. But our whole content team is, you know, hey, you have a gut that says, and often it's, you know, not our gut, it's the Holy Spirit and uh, we believe inspired. Uh, but the, you know, the Advent theme this year is uh, we're going to do a pray 25 challenge where we journey through the 25 days of Advent um, or the 25 days leading up to the uh, Christmas day in prayer and using Mary as our guide and journeying through, you know, her references in the Old Testament, New Testament, and the how she exemplifies the virtues of Advent and uh, how she leads us to uh, the nativity ultimately. And it's just, you know, was an idea that one of the folks on our content team came up with and it just fit perfectly. And, you know, who better to lead us through Advent than Mary. And, um, so anyway, it's a combination of kind of, you know, science of, Hey, what, what is the data telling us? What are folks recommending? There's a bunch of really beautiful chaplets and a bunch of stuff, prayers and novenas that folks, uh, have changed their own life on the app. And we get a ton of recommendations every day. So we've got a channel where we talk to customers and, and folks on the app every day to get, get their, um, uh, get their ideas and, and insights. But yeah, it's really for us just about trying to make something that's a great guide and authentically in line with church teaching and as high a quality of content as possible. The vast, to answer your last question, the vast majority of it is stuff that we create or that we partner with these folks to create. So it's original custom to the, uh, Hallow app, all of the nighttime Bible stories, um, the whole sleep section. A lot of the music actually is also original too, but a good chunk of it is partnering with, I'd say probably 20 ish percent of the content is partnering with, uh, content that's, uh, of, of, already been created. So Brother Isaiah has some amazing albums that we have on the app, Father Mike's Bible in a Year. Obviously, we partnered with Ascension on um, Bishop Barron's sermons and, and a handful of those things to share to folks in what I think is a unique way so that they can build a, a real habit. We have awesome like custom background uh, music, like playback speed, so you can adjust the playing uh, speed of folks, slow Father Mike down or speed other people up. <laughs> and uh, you can reflect as a journal after the session, connect with groups to kind of have prayer, Bible study stuff. So a bunch of stuff that we try to create to the app to make it a unique experience. But, um, but yeah, the, the vast majority of it is exclusive or, or original content created by, by the Halo team. Yeah. Even when you're aggregating from someplace else, having stuff in one single location that has push notifications to remind you to pray and journal and things like that is val is a value add, even if you're bringing stuff in from elsewhere. 
Yeah, and we wanted to try to create something that there are a ton of you know podcasts or resources or YouTube videos out there um, for folks looking to grow in their faith. We really wanted to create something where folks could come and always know both that it was in line with church teaching, but also that it was really high quality content and really well produced content. And so we you know have a small select group of creators that we work with and, and partner with a lot of phenomenal folks, but they all are creating kind of phenomenal world class content. So um, has been a has been a blessing, honestly, to be able to both meet these folks and to, to work on content with them. Fun. How many members of the Halo team are there, by the way? Yeah, it's uh, crazy to believe, but I mean, probably a year and a half ago, there were maybe five of us, eight of us, and and now there's uh, roughly 30 uh, and adding a few more folks over the next couple of weeks and, and still hiring. So definitely head to the, I would recommend everybody head to the halo.com, check out the low we're hiring thing if you're interested. But, uh, but yeah, roughly about 30 folks so far. Well, that actually raises another question. How did the worldwide pandemic and the related lockdown affect Halo and your team? We launched a good bit before the pandemic. Sure. Um, so the end of 2018 is when when we launched publicly and we saw an enormous amount of growth and folks really interested in uh, there was a lot of stress before the pandemic and a lot of <laughs> stuff going on, a lot of anxiety, especially young folks today um, in my generation and the younger generations, just the amount of uh, from technology and social media, just the amount of notifications, the social interactions you got to keep track of is just enormously stressful and anxious. But so we saw this kind of, and I think it's this much broader trend of folks interested in spirituality and looking for kind of this deep sense of peace. But then with COVID, we saw, you know, continued really high growth and and folks trying to um, look for the app. I think the big things that folks got excited about. The first was right at the beginning of the pandemic to use it as an opportunity for, uh, to turn kind of the isolation into a retreat, um, to kind of be like a monk within (laughs) the cell of your own home. Yeah. And the, as a, as opposed to, you know, watching Netflix all day and the, and then as the, uh, pandemic continued, uh, you know, we had a lot of folks dealing with both exhaustion from the pandemic and looking for some sense of peace, some sense of rest, some break, uh, but also enormous amounts of suffering and grief. Folks who had lost loved ones, folks who were isolated in a hospital, weren't able to see their grandkids, a bunch of folks who were struggling with uh, really, re- really terrible suffering during the pandemic. And uh, we found just absolutely miraculous stories of God being able to, um, through the app and, and through prayer, being able to bring them a sense of peace and a sense of comfort and a sense of strength to wow. help carry them through. So I've seen, um, you know, and it's not, it's, there's a bunch of stuff going on that folks are exhausted by political hatred and division and, uh, constant negative news and crisis after crisis. Um, and so it's, uh, there's a bunch of stuff that I think points to this story of, folks looking for a place of rest and a place of peace. And we're excited to be able to lead with kind of the church's beautiful spirituality and, and tradition of spirituality to, uh, I don't think there's a, a better way to help folks find peace than, than, uh, than the big man upstairs. So are, uh, are excited to continue that journey. Yeah. Well, what are some dreams for the future of Hallow? What does your, what does your roadmap look like from here? Yeah, I think there is, you know, there's an ultimately micro version of this answer, which is, you know, honestly, if we can help one, two more people who send us a, you know, somebody sent us a note a couple weeks ago that said, I just wanted to let you know that my friend was terminally ill and had seven days left to live and was in- intimidated to pray, hadn't prayed in a long time, if not ever before in his life. And we prayed, we were able to pray through the rosary, uh, through the Hallow app, the rosary for the last seven days of his life and just wanted to thank you for the impact that you've made. And like, man, if we could do one more of those things five years from now, that would be uh, phenomenal. We're not the ones doing it. God is by had, clearly uh, in, in folks' lives. He, he reminds us of that every day. But the, you know, at, at the at the micro end, it's, if we could reach out to someone, especially folks who may have fallen away from their faith or don't take their faith super seriously, or maybe are interested in spirituality and are like, oh, I didn't know the Catholic church had some spiritual stuff or some meditative stuff. You know, if we can reach out to those folks and help them to grow a little bit closer to God or rekindle a relationship with God, you know, again, an infinite, an infinite ROI. On the other hand, I really do think, you know, at the macro level that this has the opportunity to change the course of the church, especially in, in the West. And it's this opportunity of leading with spirituality and leading with the peace that our faith offers. There's a bunch of aspects to our faith that are really powerful. There's 
beauty, an infinite amount of beauty, really intricate thought through truth and theology. But I think there's this opportunity that we have, especially with younger generations, to reach out to folks with this spirituality and this this peace and this rest. Come to me, all you who are weary, and I will give you rest. I feel like uh, our, our hypothesis is that folks are really hungry for that. You can see that in the data of the giant growth in spiritual but not religious folks. Uh, folks are stressed and anxious and the mental health concerns. Um, my little sister gets approximately 900 notifications to her phone every minute <laughs> from Snapchat or Instagram. Right. And you know, I think Christ really has this enormous power to bring this deep sense of peace into your life. And so leading with that, I do think has the opportunity to, to help a lot of folks find God. And at the end of the day, you know, we just, as many saints as possible is, uh, is the vision for Hallow. We've got a lot of work to do. So we've got to add a lot more languages. We've got to build out the app to be a lot better. We've got to add a lot more really phenomenal content. There's a lot of great creators and partners that we haven't worked with yet. Uh, so who are super excited to help folks connect with and, and grow deeper in their spiritual life together with. Uh, so there's a, there's a, a lot of work to be done, but are, are pretty excited for what the future has in store. Wow. Well, final question. Early on, you wrote a few pieces on the Hallow blog about your own journey from atheist to maybe a Christian, parts one and two, and the nine books that helped make me a Christian. Now, how would you say that, well, has working with Hallow over these past few years helped you to come to any further reflections on your own journey? I'm definitely uh, 120% uh, 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 try to be at least and fail every day, but to, to be a, a, a Christian and, and, uh, and have been brought back to the Catholic faith with more zeal than I ever thought I'd you know, have. I mean, the, the beauty of the Mass, the beauty of the sacraments. And that's really the hypothesis or the, the, what we think will happen with Hallow and what we see happen is as folks kind of, as I did, kind of discover this spiritual life and this relationship with God that they're brought back into the beauty of the church. I mean, my own journey, really the most shocking part to me over the last you know, kind of the beginning was, okay, wrestling with a decent bit of the theology and then really using prayer and meditation as the thing that was like, wow, this, this could actually be real and I should give it, give it a shot and dive in to discover whether this is a real relationship. And, uh, you know, that at the beginning it was, a it was, it was a test. If not, I know you're not supposed to test God, but, um, was, Hey, all of this stuff that the church says is great. And all these theologians are so much smarter than I am. So who am I to say who's right and who's wrong? Like I, I listen to Richard Dawkins and I get convinced one day and I listen to another, uh, a Christian theologian or C.S. Lewis or somebody and get convinced the other day. So who's to say who's right and who's wrong? And the whole engineering thing uh, background was you got to find some sort of test. And the only thing that I could really find is, well, hey, if, if this, um, if you can talk to this guy, if you could text him in the morning and say, Hey, what should I do today? And he would respond. That seems like a pretty foolproof, um, foolproof answer. And, uh, you know, then I tried praying and just felt like I was going through the motions, but then this whole kind of meditation journey really changed my life and really brought me to what I feel like is a two way relationship with God. And at this point it's, you know, I guess someone really, really smart could try to convince me that God doesn't exist, but it would be the same as convincing me that my wife doesn't exist. It's like a, a real relationship that I have every day that I talk to more than anyone else and that guides me in every one of my decisions and that brings me an immense amount of peace and, and strength and, you know, in times of great difficulty and great. And one of the things I love about the Psalms is however your feeling is, is how God can interact with you. Um, but the biggest thing, the biggest takeaway that I've gotten is just how, tactically God has interacted in this hallow mission. Like you, you kind of think like, Oh yeah, some, you could maybe make the argument that some of the things are miraculous or whatever it is, but every one of the successes that we've had with hallow has been, you know, we try really, really hard for a month or two to get something to work and we fail. And then God just does it with the, with the snap of a finger. Uh, you know, father Mike is a great example. We reach out for a bunch of different ways, try to find different ways to, to partner with father Mike and he's an incredibly busy guy. So, you know, has an, has an infinite number of emails or whatever going through and a bunch of folks reaching out to him. And then randomly he just reaches out to us. We give up essentially. And then randomly he reaches out to us. And so, you know, it's just an example of, uh, the Holy Spirit just beating us over the head with the fact that he is in charge and is leading uh, leading this thing, which is actually an enormously stress-relieving activity because I don't know how founders do it when they <laughs> think that it's all on them. But the good news is for us, it's all, we're just trying to take it wherever God is is leading it. But yeah, the kind of the 
the tactical nature of God's involvement, I never would have expected at this level, even though, even when I, you know, thought I would have started to really believe that he existed. I never would have expected that he would have had this, uh, this tactical of a role in uh, the building of Hallow. Wow. Well, I must say, as you're speaking, I'm reminded, of course, of Blessed Basil Moreau, the founder of the Congregation of Holy Cross, who, who wrote that one of the goals was to have students make prayers of their education. And I think that's literally what you're doing with Hello. Well, I appreciate it. That's uh, incredibly kind words. The uh, and the only thing, the only person doing anything uh, true or good here is God, and I just keep trying to get in the way and screw it up, and He keeps fixing it. But it's been a it's been a heck of a journey to be uh, be a part of. Well, Alex Jones, co-founder and CEO of Hallo, thank you so much for being with us. Thanks so much for having me. God bless. Thank you to Alex Jones. In the show notes, you will find links to the Hallow app, some of the blog posts documenting his faith journey, and a bit about the business model that Hallow has established. Subscribe to Ethics and Culture Cast so that you can always get the latest episodes by visiting ethicscenter.nd.edu slash podcast. We would love your feedback. Please review the show on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts, and email your suggestions to cecpodcast at nd.edu. Our theme music is I Don't Know by Grapes, licensed under the Creative Commons Attribution License. We'll see you next time on Ethics and Culture Cast. Until then, make good decisions. <laughs>